Hello students, welcome back to next lecture in Java programming. Today we are going to discuss about the basic uh, structure of a Java program. This is also an introductory part. Uh, in the last session we have seen some introductory concepts like data types, variables and this is a continuation for that uh, lecture actually. Okay, So, today we will see a very basic structure of a Java program. I am not going to give you all the details of a Java program, all the uh, structure of a Java program but in it we will be seeing only the basic uh, Java program, how the uh, basic Java program looks like. That structure we are going to discuss in today's session. Okay. So let's start the session students. So I've given uh, what is today's topic. Today's topic is the basic structure of a Java program. Very basic structure I'm giving here. Uh, as you see uh, the structure, every Java program starts with the first statement will be an import statement. Import statement. The first statement in your Java program will be always an import statement if you are Im importing any libraries. That part we will speak it later in the later, uh, couple, in the later classes. Uh, always a Java program starts with this that is class class name. We will discuss what is a class and uh, what is what does the class holds and all that also I will be discussing in today's lecture okay. So the basic Java program looks like it starts with class followed by class name open the bracket and just close the class. Whatever the logic which you are going to write that should be. Whatever the variables you are going to use or whatever the methods you are going to use. All those needs to be uh, enclosed within the class always in Java. Java in Java whatever the methods, whatever the variables, whatever the logic you are going to write that should be enclosed within the class only. So we will start with the class. Class is a keyword here. Class is a keyword. So class is a keyword followed by class name. There should be space in between. Class name is an identifier. Class name is an identifier. What does this mean? Identifier means user can define whatever the name he or she likes. We can put any name for the class name. Usually the basic Java program looks like this class, class name, open the flower bracket. We will be writing main method. Inside the main method we will be writing the logic. Close the main method and close the class. Okay, This is a very basic Java program. Here the first word is class. Class is a keyword should be written always in the small letters. Followed by class name. Class name is an identifier meaning whatever the name which you like you can name it. Okay. Followed by we should not use any special symbols in between like spaces, uh, dollar symbols, etc. But we can use underscore symbol. Okay, That is the class name. We use a defined name. We can put open the flower bracket. After op opening the flower bracket, we will be writing a main method inside the class. We already uh, learned C and C++. No? In C, in C also we will be writing uh, the main method. Inside the main method, we are putting all the logic for our application. The same thing, we will be also writing a main method in Java. The main method should be always present inside a class, but not outside the class. We should not write the main method outside the class. Okay. So, the main method signature, the main method signature is this one. It should not, it should not deviate this, this signature. Public, static, void, main, string, some variable name, it's of type array. Okay. The main method signature, this is called method signature. The first statement in method definition is called as method signature. This method signature should not be deviated, it should be as it is. Public, static, void, main, it takes one argument that is of type string and variable name followed by it is an array. Okay. Uh, after that open the method, whatever the statements, whatever the logic you want to write, put it in that, in this, within the main method and close the main method and close the, this is closing the class. And this is closing the main method. Okay. So this is the base, how the basic Java program looks like. It starts with class followed by class name. Open the flower bracket. Write down the main method. Main method signature is public static void main. Each is a keyword. Each one is a keyword. Public is a public is a keyword. Static is a keyword. Void is a keyword. Main is a method name. Method name. Main is a method name. Followed by this method takes a single argument of type string. And here we are putting args. Args is a variable name, a reference variable name, and it is of type array. Okay. And open the flower brackets. 
write down some set of statements which you want to write and close the main mirror and close the class. This is the way we usually write a Java program, ba basic Java program I'm speaking. I'm not including all the instance variables, instance methods, all those things I'm not including in today's lecture, okay? I'm giving only very basic structure. So very basic structure of Java program looks like this. Okay, once again I'm repeating, it starts with class, class name followed by open, open bracket, public static void main, you should not remove any of these keywords. You should not remove public, you should not remove static, you should not remove void. Everything is mandatory and you should not even include any other keywords also in this. The method signature should be as it is. And you should not even remove this parameter also. You have to give this parameter also. String of type args. String args. Okay. This is a structure. Uh, and as we know that uh, the uh, Java program starts its exit, the Java compiler starts its execution from the main method. In Java also the execution, the execution of your program starts from the main method. Okay. So this is a basic syntax I have given. This is a syntax of a basic uh, Java uh, program. We will see an example program now. Okay. We will see an, uh, a simple Java program. Simple. A simple Java program how it looks. Okay, usually in any programming language, when we learn any new programming language, the first program which we usually write is hello world program. What is a program? We usually write the first program when we learn any new programming language, the one is hello world program. So we will write this hello world program in Java now. Okay, fine. So we will be using the very basic structure of Java program now. The very the basic structure of Java program always starts with class. Class is a keyword, should be written everything in small letters followed by class name. Class name is an identifier. So I will be taking the class name as sample uh, program. I am taking the class name as sample program. If you observe the class name students here. The class name includes two let two words. One is sample, another one is program. Isn't it? We can even write one word also. Okay, there is no um, there, there is no such rule that we have to take all two words, three words. We, we, we can even go for a single word class name also. Here I have taken two words. Two words usually we in Java we follow an approach called approach while naming a class is every word starting letter should be capital letter. Every word starting letter should be capital letter. S should be capital letter, P should be capital letter. It is not mandatory one, but it is an approach we usually follow. Okay. Whenever you name a class name, make sure that each word in your class name, each word starting letter should be capital letter. Here I am having two words, sample program. So each word starting letter should be capital letter, that is S and P. Okay. That is one thing and one more thing I will be giving. If I take sample, I can take something like this also, sample 1. My class name here, I have taken it as sample 1. Here I am having only one word, so the starting word, uh, starting letter of the word should be capital letter. S should be capital letter. If you write small letter also, it will take. It won't throw you, throw any error. But it is an approach we follow. That is a principle we follow in uh, Java, okay. And one more thing I need to specify, if I want to, uh, if I write something like this, for example, yeah, sample program. Like if I write this class name something like this sample program, this is an invalid class name. This is an invalid class name because there is a space in between. Spaces are not allowed in the class names. Don't write any spaces or any other special symbols like at the rate, dollar, equals to, comma. Don't write any special symbols, okay? Except underscore. Underscore can be allowed, okay? You can, you can write it underscore, then it will be valid one. If you put it as underscore, then yes, it is valid, okay? Either put underscore or don't give any special symbols in between, join all the words. That is the best approach we usually follow, okay? So what is my file name? My file name is sample1. I have taken the file name, uh, sorry, class name as sample1. After that, open the flower bracket. Start with class, followed by class name, class name. In class name, each word, each word starting letter should be capital letter. Uh, and it would not allow any special symbols or uh, uh, it allows digits numbers, but it will not allow any special symbols. 
okay fine the next one is public static void mean it takes one parameter of type string and here i am writing it as s see when i have when i am discussing the basic structure i have taken it as args here okay it is a variable name variable name can be anything no you can take either args or s or a or b or c we usually get a confusion here we usually get confusion here in every textbooks in every website they will be giving args a r g s it doesn't mean that every time we have to take args only args is nothing but a variable name here variable name can be anything which is a valid one should be there so i'm taking s here s also s also we can take okay but it should be of type always string but not of any type like int float double we should not write int float double or else here but i can change the variable name and uh, and the, this array should be present this variable is of type string and it should be of an array always we'll discuss about this what is this uh, uh, string as is represents and all we'll discuss that also okay after that open the flower bracket and in order to print hello world onto the console the print statement i am using is system dot out dot print ln within double quotations i am writing hello world and close the main method and close the class name okay so this is a basic hello world program in java uh, look once again which program we have written basic hello world program okay fine the java program always starts with a keyword called class and provided class name the class name i have taken it as sample 1 open the flower bracket write down the main method main method syntax should be always this one public static void main inside the main method it takes a one parameter Para one parameter we have to pass. That parameter should be always of what type? Should be always of string type, array of string type. Should be always a type of array of string type. Okay. And open the main method. And inside the main method we usually write the logic. Okay. So here the program is hello world. I have to print hello world onto the console. So in order to print anything onto the console. If it is a C programming language, we usually use which which uh, which output function we use. We use printf function. If I write printf hello world in C, what is the output I'll be getting? I'll be getting hello world onto the console. Similarly in C, this is in C actually. Okay. Similarly in C plus plus, we use C out. C out. If I put it in double quotations, hello world, the the same thing will be appearing onto the console for me. This is C plus plus. Okay. Similarly, in Java, if we want to write anything onto the console, this is a statement we use. System dot system dot out dot println within the within the brackets we will be writing the string. This is the string hello world and uh, end with a semicolon. Okay. So here, if you observe, this entire thing acts as a printf statement in C. Okay. Uh, one more thing I need to specify here that is. System dot out dot print ln. System is a class. You don't know what is a class and all here. Later I'll be discussing all those terminology. System is a class. Out is a reference variable. Out is a reference variable. Print ln is a method. Okay. Just uh, just uh, listen. All these uh, uh, terms will get clear in the next lecture. Okay. System is a class. Out is a reference variable. Print ln is a method. Okay. System dot out dot print ln. If you want to print anything onto the console, this is the uh, statement we need to use. System dot out dot print ln. Okay, within the double quotations, whatever you write, that will be printed onto the console. So the output of this program will be. If I compile this program and run this program, the output I will be getting is hello world. Okay. Doing hello world. We will see few more uh, things in this uh, uh, program. Here uh, I have taken three system dot out dot print ln. Three system dot out dot print ln statements. Okay, observe here this one. System dot 
dot out dot print lens here. Observe here this one system dot out dot print ln and this one system dot out dot print. <coughs> Excuse me. Next one is system dot out dot print. I have used two methods here. One is print ln and another one is print. Both I can use. Okay. I will be discussing the difference now. System dot out dot print ln. ln stands for new line. ln stands for new line. Okay. So after executing, running this program, I will be getting the output. I will be getting the output like, what is the first system dot out dot print ln contains? Hello world. So hello world will be printed onto the monitor, onto the console, the output. As this is, I have used system dot out dot print ln. After printing this output, it goes to the next line. The cursor goes to the next line. And in the next system dot out dot print ln, I have used hello csc. I have written hello csc. So hello csc will be printed onto the next line. Did I use any ln state print ln or print? Only print I have used. So it won't go to the next line. It will stay here only. The cursor will stay here only. The cursor will stay here only. And what is the next system dot out dot print ln? Welcome. I didn't use any print ln here. I have used only print. So welcome will be Welcome will be welcome will be printed next to two CSC. So that is the difference, students. Print ln and print. Print ln. Ln stands for new line. After printing this string, it goes to the new line. So after printing hello world, the cursor goes to the new line. And again, I am trying to print hello hello CSC. So hello CSC it will get print. And I didn't use print ln here. I have used the print. So the cursor won't go to the next line. Instead, it will stay there only. And again, one more system dot out dot print statement. Welcome. Welcome will be printed in the same line. Followed by CSC. Okay. That is the difference. Print and print ln. Print ln means after printing the string, it goes to the cursor goes to the next line. Print means after printing the statement, the cursor will wait there only. Okay. So that is the difference. One thing you need to observe. The second one is, if I remove public here, if I remove public here, will my program get executed? No, the program won't get executed. The signature of the method, main method should be always public static void main and it takes one parameter of type string array of strings. So, public is mandatory. We will discuss why public, why static, why void, why main, all those things we will discuss. Even if I remove this, if I remove static, also it won't come, uh, the pro my program won't get executed. If I remove void, also my, board, my program won't get executed. If I remove string, this one, then also my program won't get executed. Instead of placing string, if I put int, then also my program won't get executed. Okay. So the signature of the main method should be always public static void main. Inside the main method, I have to pass one parameter that is always of array of string type okay so that you need to take care the main method should be always inside a class it should not be outside a class always it should be inside a class everything in java should be placed inside a class but not outside the class except two statements one is import statement and then one is uh, user defined packages those two statements needs to be outside the class rest of the things everything whatever you want to write it you should be put it inside a class only okay so the class name also I have discussed. How should be the class name? Class name is an identifier. Whatever name you like, you can put it. But no spaces should be there in between. Uh, and an approach which we are following is each word in class name, each word starting letter should be capital letter. Okay. Um, here in system.out.println, system is a class. System is a class. I am telling system is a class. So, if you observe here, in system, S should be capital letter. You should not write small letter because it is a predefined class, defined by Java itself. So, system is a class, S should be capital letter here. Okay. Dot out, out is a reference variable. Dot println, println is a method. Method will be always start with a small letter. So, everything is small letters. In this statement, S should be capital letter. The rest of the things should be all in small letters. Okay. Uh, so this is a very basic hello world program which we have discussed uh, and I will be giving few more uh, uh, inputs to this program. Always we will start with a class. The class name I am taking is add, sorry, add to 
numbers. The class name I have taken is add two numbers. Open the uh, class. After opening the class, I will be writing the main method public static void main. Inside the main method, I am taking string. Some variable, I can take any variable which I like, okay. Not only args, not only s, any one I can take. Open it. I, now I have to write down the logic for adding two numbers inside the main method. For that, what I am going to do is, I am going to take two variables of type integer int a is equals to 10, b is equals to 20. We have discussed data types and variables in the previous lecture. So, how to declare a variable, how to define a variable, we already seen. So, this is a statement of declaring variables as well as assigning, uh, initializing the variables. A and B are the variables. A, B are the variables. I have assigned 10 to A and 20 to B. Okay. So, I have declared two variables A and B of type integer and I have assigned values also. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to take one more variable also that is C here. Okay. C is equals to A plus B. I am adding two numbers. C is equals to C is equals to A plus B. After adding, I want to, I have to print C variable. So, how I can print system dot out dot print ln or print I can take. I can just write C here. Okay. Close the main method, close the class. I have closed the main method, I have closed the class here. This is the example program for adding two numbers in Java. Same as it is in C, we have written the same logic in C also, isn't it? But the, the syntax, the template is different. Here we are including some class, class name, public static void, mean all these things. The, the logic will be same, okay? So this is the uh, program to add two numbers. The thing which you need to understand here is, I have taken two variables a, b, three variables a, b, c of type integer. To two variables, I have assigned values a and b. And in the next statement, I am adding two, num two numbers a and b, a plus b. And I want to see the result of c. The result of uh, a plus b is stored in c. So I want to, if I want to see the result, then I have to write system dot out dot either print or print ln. Directly I can write the variable name. I am not putting it in double quotations. If you observe, I am not putting in double quotations. If I put it in double quotations, then C will be printed onto the monitor. Okay, but I want the value in that variable. This is a variable name. No, I want the value to be retrieved from that variable. So only I should not write within double quotations. With, uh, if I didn't write anything within the double quotations, it, it, is a, it is a variable. So, in that variable, what is the value I am having? I am having after a plus b. a plus b means 10 plus 20. 30 will be stored in c. c contains 30. c contains 30. If I print it onto the monitor, the output I will be getting is 30. Okay. This is the way I can use a print statement also. In the previous example, within the, within the double quotations, I have given the string. Whatever you have given in double quotations, that will be printed onto the mod console directly. If I didn't put it in double quotations, if I, try, if I want to print any variable data, then this is the approach we usually follow. Just write down the variable, that's all. No need to specify any format specifiers also here. I didn't use any format specifiers as if in C. In C, how we will be writing? In C, I will be writing printf percentile d comma c isn't it this is the way i write it in c but in java i didn't write any format specifiers i can directly print if you want to write by using format specifiers that is also possible in java i will tell you the statement for that we do have one more uh, print method in java that is system dot out dot I can use printf also here printf if I f stands for formatting formatted if I use printf statement I need to give the format specifier I can give the format specifier like this I can write both are same both are correct in Java okay if if I want to use formatted output output then I can use printf statement system dot out dot printf I have to give the format specifier comma variable name. If I don't want to use any format specifiers, you can directly uh, go with system dot out dot print and just give the variable name. The variable which it holds the value will be printed onto the console. Either ways you can write. 
okay you can either use format specifier if you want to uh, use format specifier go for using printf printf is also a method printf is also a method similar to print so to, in today's class we have seen three methods one is println another one is print and another one is printf three uh, methods will work in java okay either you can use these two or else this also okay both uh, both uh, will do the same things if you want to go for formatting your output then better to use printf function printf stands for print formatted strings if you want to format your strings just go using printf statement else you can directly go and use println or print function okay so this is the uh, addition of two numbers using java program again uh, the same concept i have started with class class followed by some class name open the class public static void main take one uh, give one uh, parameter open the bracket write down the logic which you need close the method close the class name this is the way for all the java programs we do this is a very simple programs i have taken here just adding two numbers subtracting two numbers uh, writing hello world printing hello hello world onto the console all these are very basic java program which you can write down the logic directly in the main method rather than putting elsewhere you can write down the logic directly in the main method we do write the logics in uh, not in the main method but in the other methods also that part i will be discussing in next lecture so for today's class uh, i'll be uh, signing off uh,